Mark Levin here. After any presidential election, I take time to reevaluate my own financial investments. That's why I continue to invest in gold for help with my financial protection. When it comes to gold, I only trust Advantage Gold. They're a top gold company in America, and that's who I turn to for my own gold purchases. Call them now at 800-900-8000. That's 800-900-8000 for a free gold investment kit. And see if you qualify for up to $1,000 in free silver. That's 800-900-8000. And tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. I'd say for most of my career, even before my career, the issue of the federal judiciary, the Supreme Court, has been at the forefront of my mind. I wrote an entire book, my first book, Men in Black, on the Supreme Court. Then, of course, we have the lower federal courts, the appellate courts, and below them, the district courts. And so what's happening in the next two months is Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer, and the Democrats are trying to ram through as many lifetime appointments to the circuit and district courts as possible. They don't play fair. They're not interested in rules. They don't care about the election. They got one through yesterday, who if he's not the most radical, and that's saying something, is certainly one of the most radical lawyers ever. On the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, that covers Florida, and Alabama, and Georgia, among other areas. On the Circuit Court, the Appellate Court, Right under the Supreme Court. So the Democrats are trying to get these lifetime appointments, almost 30 of them, on the federal courts now, so that their radical agenda, which was just rejected by the American people, can continue. Woodrow Wilson, a racist segregationist, a Democrat progressive president, He made it clear in his writings, as an intellectual, as a scholar of sorts, and I've written about this, that the way to change America is through the judiciary, because the American people themselves will not vote for the kind of change that the so-called progressives, a.k.a. American Marxists, seek. Another communist, Italian communist, Gramsci, He wrote that the so-called proletariat, that is the middle class, as the communists call it, the proletariat, will not rise up and overthrow a country that they voluntarily fight to defend and protect. And so that must be imposed on them through the bureaucracy from the top down, one step at a time. 
secreting into the culture, secreting into the civil society. So the judges and the top-down bureaucracy. So this evening, as I speak to you, that's at the forefront of what's going on. The Democrat Party is trying to ram through 28 radical, make it 27 now, judges, who will impact your lives for the entirety of their lives and your life. And they're trying to prevent Donald Trump from getting key cabinet positions filled so he can reject the Gramsci communist viewpoint of how to control America through revolution, the top down through the bureaucracy. And so the Democrats haven't surrendered anything. They haven't learned anything. They don't care. Their little revolution is ongoing. And they're using the unelected parts of the government. The judiciary and the bureaucracy to try and advance their cause. The unelected part. This is very important to understand. Very important to understand. I will not oppose any of the nominations that President Trump has made or will make to his government. Because even though I don't agree with every single one of his appointments, so what? The problem is this is the team he needs, this is the team he wants, whether they like it at National Review, whether they like it at the Wall Street Journal editorial page, whether they like it or not. He was elected president. And don't tell me, well, he's not a dictator. We already know that, and we don't need lectures from you fools. On the other hand, he's not a patsy. He's not a Pollyanna. He just won in a landslide. And that's a fact. And giving him the the cabinet that he wants and senior positions that he wants doesn't make him a dictator, for God's sakes. They slow-walked his appointments in 2016, made it very, very difficult for him in key cabinet positions to do what he wanted to do while they were plotting to impeach him, while they were plotting to unleash a criminal investigation against him, to undermine him, to subpoena him, to bog him down. That's not going to happen this time. It's simply not. Because of you and me, we're not going to allow it. Well, people out there are giddy. We are happy. People are giddy. People are vying for positions. We are the watchmen, you and I. We're keeping an eye on the Republic. Keeping an eye on the Democrat Party. Keeping an eye on the media. We don't trust them. They don't embrace our ideals, America's principles. They simply do not. Now you're hearing a growing chorus in the media that Donald Trump didn't win a mandate. He didn't win a landslide. Tell me, what election did the media win? None. In fact, they lost the last election. Who do these... Who do these people think they are to be telling us what happened in the election and what didn't happen? Who the hell do they think they are? Who named them God Almighty to determine events, to have the final say on what's going on in our society and culture? They're nobody. They're worse than nobody. They hate the country and they hate us, and we know this as a matter of fact. Because they've said so. The words they use, the names they use, the way they use their platforms. It's disgusting. Yes. So now they're trying to destroy Pete Hegseth, a war hero. A war hero. They said nothing about Dougie Emhoff. They said nothing about Tim Walls and his sickening, pathetic background. His ties to communist China. His ties to a jihadist imam. His perverse, perverse obsession with sex changes and all the rest of it in his state. That was okay. The fact that Kamala Harris didn't prosecute priest pedophiles wouldn't 
speak to the victims, the children and their families. Wouldn't prosecute any of them. That was a non-issue during the campaign, you remember? Well, I remember. Pete Hegseth. Remember Barack Obama and his ties to the Islamists? Remember Barack Obama and his mentor and out of the closet? Communist? Remember all that? No, that didn't matter. Remember Jeremiah Wright? They barely covered it. So we and others kept pushing it. Then they couldn't ignore it. But then they blew it off. Remember all that? Remember all the allegations against Bill Clinton? Sexual molestation? Rape? George Stephanopoulos, who now is basically the head honcho at ABC News, ran the war room, the quiet silence, these women. Remember all that? Remember Ted Kennedy and Chappaquiddick? Remember all that? Where a woman actually died? The cover-up took place? Horrendous cover-up. And the media participated in it. I can go down a long list here, folks, a long list. The idea that somebody, and I'm just using him as an example, that Pete Hegseth isn't qualified to be the Secretary of Defense is pathetic. Like Pete Buttigieg is qualified to be Secretary of Transportation. Like Anthony Blinken is qualified to be Secretary of State. And I can go down the list. Like Kamala Harris is qualified to be vice president, or Joe Biden is qualified to be president. Dementia Joe. We don't need to take lectures from these people. They don't get to choose Donald Trump's government. They don't get to blow off me and you and the millions and millions of people who voted for this president and voted for him to do what he said he would do. A handful of senators who didn't even face the voters, they're going to decide the fate of this administration? Not while I'm behind this damn microphone. I'll tell you that right now. And these Republicans in the Senate who don't get off their fat asses and show up on the Senate floor and block these radical left-wing judges? What the hell are you there for? I can understand why some of these people are busy. Honestly, J.D. Vance is vice president. I get it. He has to go back and forth from mar a He's involved in significant decisions as the vice president in waiting. I got it. The others, no. No excuses. None. I don't care if you've been nominated to be this, that, or the other. You show up at that Senate, and you protect we the people, the American people, from lifetime appointed radical left-wing Marxist Islamists. Because we have to live under their rule. It's the most important damn job a senator has. And the idea that you'll go to a rocket launch, that's right, even some of my friends, that you'll go to a rocket launch or that you'll do something, I don't want to hear about it. Do your damn job. This is job number one. All of you. The Democrats show up. They're ramming these bastards through one circuit court, one district court after another. That affects us when we go to court. We want a judge who's objective. We want a judge who's going to follow the Constitution. We want a judge who's going to follow the law and the facts. We don't want some radical ideologue dressed up in a black robe. As I said, my first book was on this, Men in Black. I don't care if you want to watch a rocket launch, you want to raise money, you want to have a big dinner. You put your butt in that Senate, that chamber, and do your friggin' job. And we're going to start taking names here and start reading them off. That's what we're going to do. Oh, and the recess appointments. These clowns that write these pieces about recess appointments, like somehow liberty's at stake. Liberty's at stake. I'm not a big one on recess appointments, but let me tell you something. They've been going on since the beginning of the republic. They've been going on 
since well after the horse and buggy, since we've had jets and trains and planes and buses. George W. Bush had 177 recess appointments. Did anybody talk about freedom then? Anybody? Clinton had recess appointments. There have been a zillion, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of recess appointments in this country. The Supreme Court had an opportunity to kill off recess appointments. It's in the Constitution. They didn't. They limited them, but they didn't destroy them. They didn't get rid of them. Why? Well, think for a second. Like these phony brainiacs who do not and write their pieces and pat themselves on the head and then quote each other. Think for a second. If we didn't have the recess appointments, what do you think a Chuck Schumer as the Democrat leader in the Senate would do to a, to a Donald Trump and his nominees? He'd block every damn one of them. And there'd be no recourse whatsoever. That is, massive power shift to the United States Senate. Not even the full Senate, just a basic majority. By an opposition party, maybe a few repubics, you know, like a Susan Collins and a Lisa Murkowski, would have the ability to cripple an incoming president of the opposite party. These fools don't even think these things through. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Did you see what the Federal Reserve did literally days after President Trump's victory? It's lowered interest rates by a quarter. Do you know why it did that? It's worried about the economy. It's worried about the fact that jobs aren't being created. We're seeing all kinds of shifts in our portfolios, and it's important to stay aware. That's why I'm urging everyone to diversify and consider gold as one of your financial shields. Now, gold has weathered every kind of economic downturn throughout history. I want you to call Advantage Gold. They're the best of the best, folks. I've dealt with all of them. They're the best. They're my gold company. 1-800-900-8000. Get a free gold investment kit to see how you can get started with gold. I recommend Advantage Gold to anyone who's serious about protecting their wealth, and that's you. Call 800-900-8000 for your free gold investment kit, and you can even qualify for up to $1,000 in free silver. That's 800-900-8000. Call them now. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. You'll be very happy with them. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. You notice every Republican nominee is controversial, whether they're controversial or not. Some are, some aren't. But when's the last time you heard about a controversial Democrat of any kind? Bernie Sanders is on the cable program, CNN, MSNBC, as long as they last, I guess. They never say the controversial senator from New Hampshire. They don't call Talib controversial, who's a bigot and an anti-Semite. They don't call Omar controversial, who's a bigot and an anti-Semite. They don't call AOC controversial, who's a bigot and an anti-Semite. Why is that? Why is it that this, this clown that just got the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, this radical kook who shouldn't be anywhere near a courtroom, why is it that he's not called controversial? Why is it that Tim Walls isn't controversial? When he's a freak show, a walking freak show. Have you noticed, America? Only our people are controversial. Isn't it weird? Some of them are. Most of them aren't. And so what? Controversial. Yes. And that's the way you create a narrative. So now we have nominees that are controversial. Controversial. Merrick Garland wasn't controversial. We can go down to the... Blinken is the biggest anti-Israel, anti-Semite to ever serve as Secretary of State. And that's saying something... But he's Jewish. Yes, he's half Jewish. So what? It happens. Ask Bernie Sanders. Look at that jerk. Same damn thing. Their Marxist Islamist ideology is more important. It's more important. I'll be right back. 
The markets are volatile. They're shooting up wildly only to drop without warning. The Fed just cut rates yet again, this time by a quarter point. Why? Because the Federal Reserve is not confident the economy is strong. In fact, last month only 12,000 jobs were created, all of them in the government. That's why I'm telling you again, diversification is crucially important. And diversification with gold is what I do. And the company I use, and I've used many, the best one is Advantage Gold. Call them now at 800-900-8000 for a free gold investment kit to see how gold can help you diversify your investments and take advantage now. Now, gold has been helping to protect and grow wealth for people for thousands of years. And in these times, it could be more crucial than ever. When it comes to gold, I trust Advantage Gold. They're one of the top gold companies in America. They're who I turn to when I purchase gold. Call them now, 800-900-8000. Call 800-900-8000 now for a free gold investment kit to see how gold can help you with your investment portfolio, a.k.a. your bank accounts, your paycheck. And when you do, you could qualify for $1,000 in free silver. That's 800 800- Nine hundred eight thousand, folks. Don't wait. Call them now. Eight hundred nine hundred eight thousand, and tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. The Mark Levin Show, live and national at eight seven seven three eight one three eight one one. Cities and states that quote unquote affirm their sanctuary status, they ought to have federal funding cut, particularly as it applies to all matters related to DHS. But federal funding should be slashed. And if they want to go to court, they go to court, and we duke it out in court. But that's the, the lever, the big, the big hammer that the Trump administration will have. Cut off their funding. As much as you want to cut off, try and connect it to what's taking place so the court is more likely to uphold your actions. But the cities and states don't run the federal government. This isn't reverse federalism. Federalism, where their state authority is clearly spelled out, those things that are not authorized and granted to this new national or federal government, uh, they belong to the states. But in the case of immigration, it's very interesting. When Texas was fighting, fighting the federal government because it was failing to enforce federal law, failing to enforce federal law, not in defiance of the Tenth Amendment and federalism, but demanding that the federal government actually do its job so it wouldn't have to, it was attacked. Now we have cities and states that seek to defy the incoming Trump administration not to enforce federal law, but to defy federal law. Totally different. Totally different. And so it's going to be very, very important in my view that the administration do what it needs to do, and slashes their funding. You and I have no reason, those of us who don't live in these areas, to be subsidizing illegality, to be subsidizing illegal immigration. If they want to vote that way in their city councils and their mayors, they want to vote that way in their legislatures, these Democrat governors want to beat their chests and talk about how they're going to defy and protect illegal aliens, that's on them. So federal funding should be cut. No taxpayers' money at the federal level should be flowing into these states and these cities to alleviate their educational issues, their law enforcement issues, their health care issues, to provide additional housing or anything else. Zero. Absolutely zero. Nothing should be done. Now, I don't know who this journalist is with ABC News. I do know that Disney needs to take action now with ABC the way that Comcast appears to be dealing with MSNBC, and I'll get to that in a minute, the way that Time Warner appears appears to be dealing with CNN, I say appears, we shall see, the way that Jeff Bezos appears to be dealing with the Washington Post and the owner of the LA Times appears to be doing the same thing. But ABC continues doing what it does. They have a reporter, I've never heard of him, I can't even pronounce his name, Ike Ijoshi, I think, E-J-I-O-C-H. I'm not mocking him. I'm just trying to pronounce the name. Is Joshi? He is an ABC News journalist, I'm told. And he's on ABC News today. And out comes the decision by the judge on the horrendous, hideous murderer of Lake and Riley. The illegal alien Venezuelan gang member. And I want you to listen to how this man reports on this story. And he has no business being dressed up as a journalist. 
None whatsoever. Cut 17, go. This death of Lake and Riley and the subsequent trial has essentially been a massive political lightning rod here in this country. And you said it there yourself, the president-elect campaigning on the death of Lake and Riley and pointing to the current administration, saying that their laws and what they're calling failed policies contributed to Lake and Riley's death. Let's stop death. right there. Just the president? Lincoln's Riley family did the same thing. And so this guy is about to deny reality, rewrite history, effectively trash Trump, you, and he's a supposed reporter. Does it sound like, Mr. Producer, to you like he gives a damn about the life of Lincoln Riley? Just my opinion. He doesn't sound that way at all. Go ahead. Remind you that Ibarra entered this country uh Uh, illegally in 2022, according to law enforcement officials, and he was paroled and released by for further processing by ICE. And since that time he entered the country, he was arrested another time. Law enforcement officers saying that he was arrested in 2023 in New York City and charged with acting in a manner to injure a child less than 17, as well as a motor vehicle violation. But it's important to note that although there is very little evidence indicating a connection between immigration and violent crime. Stop right there. Listen to this fool. Listen to this clown. Half a million criminals have been let into this country over a period of time. Almost 14,000 killers. Thousands more rapists. We have 325,000 missing undocumented children. We have God knows how many women sold into sex slavery. And this guy has the gall. The gall. Says there's little evidence indicating a connection between immigration and violent crime. I bet if that were your daughter, mister, you wouldn't be worrying about statistics. Because Lincoln Riley would be alive today but for this illegal immigrant, this Venezuelan gang member. Alive today. We have law enforcement in Tennessee saying the Venezuelan gang is in every major city in Tennessee. We have a report out yesterday that says that they have footholds and are operating in 16 states. We see what's happened in New York. We see what's happening in other cities. And this guy with ABC News, a so-called journalist, Ike Ijoshi, I think, Says there's no connection. There's little evidence. Now, I don't know how many times he was at the border. I don't know if he, if he interviewed Lincoln Riley's family or any of these families. But listen to this hubris. Listen to this. This cold-blooded, phony journalist. Go ahead. Still something the uh, uh, president-elect Trump, several Republicans on the Hill, wanted to essentially plant their flag on and point that to the current Biden administration. And we saw that even as the current Biden administration has opened borders, you damn fool. We don't need a reporter to tell us. We see it ourselves. The video is obvious. The statistics demonstrate it. It's one of the reasons Donald Trump won in a landslide victory. The border's wide open. The border states are fighting like hell to, to try and find ways to close it. Our communities are overwhelmed. Law enforcement's overwhelmed. We have fentanyl pouring into this country, killing 100,000 people a year. That's almost two Vietnam wars every single year. And listen to this guy. Just listen to him. ABC News. And this is what he does? After the heinous murder of Lake and Riley? Is found guilty on all charges by the judge? Who sentences him to life without parole? That's too good for this bastard. And this is how he responds. But there's more. Go ahead. President Biden's latest State of the Union address, where Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene infamous, infamously interrupted President Biden, forcing him to acknowledge the death of Lake and Riley. Something I, that- I've had enough of this guy. This guy should be 
he should be fired. Because he's not a journalist. I don't know what he is. But to conduct yourself this way, after the judge rules against her murder, to conduct himself this way is grotesque. Absolutely disgusting, ABC News. You make me sick to my stomach. Sick to my stomach. Nobody should watch ABC News anymore. Disney, which is run by a liberal, Iger, he's back again. So, of course, now nobody can afford to go into the parks. Nobody can afford the the Disney hotels. Walt Disney's dream has been destroyed many times over. You got these woke idiots as producers, directors, and artists pushing their agenda. And you got the clown board of directors and the clown at the very top, Iger. Another liberal Democrat destroying another company that he didn't create, that he didn't found. ABC News. This is ABC News now? What happened to Howard K. Smith? That was a journalist. That was a, a newsman. A real newsman. Brinkley, who started, I believe, at ABC News. That was a real newsman. Look at this mess. George Stephanopoulos, Ike. Ijashi, if I mispronounce his name, I'm sure somebody will clear it up, but that's, that's what I know. Just disgusting, the whole damn bunch. I don't know how you watch that trial as much as we could, and then watch what took place today, the mother talking to the judge about how she feels. I don't know how you watch the body cam of the police officer with the family first learning that their precious, beautiful, dear Lincoln was murdered. As they fall to the ground, they curl up, uncontrollably sobbing. Where you come up with a jerk like this on ABC News today. Just, just sickening. And the media is filled with fools and buffoons just like this. Hat tip, right scoop. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Did you see what the Federal Reserve did literally days after President Trump's victory? It lowered interest rates by a quarter. Do you know why it did that? It's worried about the economy. It's worried about the fact that jobs aren't being created. We're seeing all kinds of shifts in our portfolios, and it's important to stay aware. That's why I'm urging everyone to diversify and consider gold as one of your financial shields. Now, gold has weathered every kind of economic downturn throughout history. I want you to call Advantage Gold. They're the best of the best, folks. I've dealt with all of them. They're the best. They're my gold company. 1-800-900-8000. Get a free gold investment kit to see how you can get started with gold. I recommend Advantage Gold to anyone who's serious about protecting their wealth, and that's you. Call 800-900-8000 for your free gold investment kit, and you can even qualify for up to $1,000 in free silver. That's 800-900-8000. Call them now. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. You'll be very happy with them. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. Pittsburgh Pirates, Mr. Producer, you're a big Pittsburgh fan, although you're a Mets guy, but nonetheless, I used to watch, Pirates were a great team in the 70s, always remember Willie Stargell, among others, a lot of great players, obviously I'm from Philadelphia, so I'm an Eagles fan, I'm a uh, Phillies fan, and all the rest, all right, you can kill it, and, uh, but there's something about the Pittsburgh teams that I've always liked, it's true. It's true. And by the way, even though I'm an Eagles fan, I like the Commanders, too. I like them. They're a great team. But I always keep an eye on the Steelers. There's something about the Steelers. And you look at uh, Dallas, unfortunately. I used to love watching Dallas. Jerry Jones, is this going to be controversial now? Has basically destroyed that team. On the way of destroying that franchise, I think. When the owners... the the voice, the face, the manager of the team, it's problematic. We saw that in Washington with uh, Dan Snyder, unfortunately. 
when the owners are kind of quiet, they're in the background, they delegate to really good people, those teams have longevity. And the Steelers seem to they have this great coach, and they have sort of a family atmosphere. I can see that developing in Washington with the new coach and uh, and that team. It's very young, and yet it's very uh, it's very united. And I see it happening in uh, in Philadelphia with that team, and I'm sure it's happening with other teams too. I just um, you know I'm not Stephen A. Smith. I'm just uh, doing my thing here, but I do watch it a lot. Like I watched the UFC. Now, Jen Psaki's at MSNBC. Jen Psaki is not a journalist. She just left the Biden White House as the chief propagandist and liar for Joe Biden. She knew he had dementia. Yet every day she went in front of that microphone, in front of that camera, and she lied. She lied to you and me and the whole world. And so apparently that's a resume enhancer over at MSNBC. But if MSNBC is going to fix things, it's going to need to deal with things that are systemic, apparently, and that's the hiring of these radical leftists who come and go out of Democrat administrations and staffs. So she says transgender athletes in school sports, that's an obscure issue. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal, even though the American people think it is, even though it effectively destroys Title IX of the Civil Rights Act of 1965, which was intended to protect and promote and fund girls and women's athletics. It's not a big deal, because apparently Jen Psaki and her family is unaffected. Now, many of you might be affected. We know a lot of colleges and universities are affected. We see it every day in what we call the media. Cut 16, go. There's obviously a lot of soul-searching right now going on within the Democratic Party, and that's a good thing. But what I worry about... Well, unfortunately, for a lot of Democrats in the media, you have to have a soul to be soul-searching, don't you, Mr. Producer? And I heard that ABC News guy after the, the verdict came in on Lincoln Riley's murder. Didn't sound like he had much of a soul, in my humble opinion. Go ahead. All that soul-searching, some Democrats might reach the wrong sweeping conclusions. And there are a lot of issues that fall into that bucket. But and Pisachi will straighten you out. Doing such a fantastic job being the chief propagandist and demagogue for the dementia in chief president, Joe Biden. So this is an obscure issue. She'll fix it for you. She'll straighten it out. She's not the problem. No, no, no. She shouldn't step aside and have a fresh face with a fresh voice. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Out to me is transgender rights. Republicans spent hundreds of millions of dollars on anti-trans ads this election cycle, including one that showed Vice President Harris talking about... Nobody spent hundreds of millions of dollars on anti-trans ads. Whatever it was, money was spent on condemning men and boys in women and girls' sports. Call it whatever you want. If somebody wants to transition, if somebody wants to change their genitalia, a.k.a. their gender, that's up to them. It's none of my damn business. But if they want to do it with my money, or they want to do it to our children, or if they want to do it and screw up our sports, then it's personal. Then, yes, there are consequences. And just because Jen Psaki doesn't have a child who's a boxer or has to deal with one of these, these individuals, just because she doesn't have somebody playing college football, or perhaps, what would he call it, college soccer, she's unaffected by it. But a lot of people are affected by it. And besides, it's immoral. That's right, it's immoral for boys and men, biological boys and men, to be playing girls' and women's sports. Period. Case closed. Moron. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. Bucks County Commissioner Diane Ellis 
Marsegalia, M-A-R-S-E-G-L-I-A, Marsegalia, a Democrat. One of the Bucks County commissioners, she was the uh, genius who said, you know, just because the court rules the way it does doesn't mean we have to follow it. Precedent doesn't really mean anything. Lawless, pathetic, so-called public servant, a.k.a. a pubic servant. They had a commissioner's meeting today, and boy, were people pissed off. But she felt the need to, to make a statement. What she should have said, I confess, you can go ahead and lock me up. But no, she didn't say that. Here's what she said. Ready for this? Cut seven. Go. We all say things that are out of turn. We all make mistakes. I made a mistake. And because I am an elected official... I am held to a far higher standard than everybody Stop. else. You aren't held to follow the law. Is that a far higher standard than you are held to, Mr. Producer? Follow what the Supreme Court of your state, 5-2 to two Democrat, by the way, what your Supreme Court told you to do? You're held to a higher standard? Just follow the damn law, but you wouldn't do it. You have no standards. That's your problem, lady. Go ahead. I apologize, and I will continue to work hard for you and endeavor to make, not make such a mistake I have a again. better idea. Resign. I continue to work hard for them while you're violating state law, while you're trying to, to change the outcome of an election of a United States senator? You're a disgrace. You'll always be a disgrace. Go ahead. I will also clarify one more thing. When I inartfully spoke and used the word precedent when I was talking about provisional ballots... I was referring to the United States Supreme Court and the precedent that has been lost on many issues, including Roe versus Wade. Oh, it's about Roe v. Wade. Oh, I'm so confused now. But then again, I'm not as smart as the commissioner for the Bucks County Board here. So when she was talking about the state Supreme Court, which ordered... You're not to count any ballots that come in envelopes that aren't dated and signed. I've heard people on TV get this wrong. Dated and signed properly. You're not to count them. That's state law. We, the court, for once in our damnable lives, are upholding the state law. She was thinking of Roe v. Wade, Mr. Producer? She was thinking of Roe v. Wade, the president there, America? Of course. Go ahead. And notice the audience isn't taking any of it. Boo, her is right. <laughs> a clown. If you would just bear with me for one more minute. Unfortunately, you, unfortunately, I took my frustration out on the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, many of whom are friends of mine and who I respect and whose decisions are complicated and difficult and important. We are all going to learn lessons from this new media landscape. What do you mean we all are going to learn lessons, you idiot? Follow the election laws. I don't need to learn that lesson. Do you, Mr. Producer? That's not a very difficult lesson to learn. If it's your damn job, you jerk. Go ahead. I am. I am a small fish in this big pond. I do not have a megaphone on Twitter or CNN, or I am not a secretary of state. I don't run a presidential campaign. This no, is the- you don't do all those things, and God willing, you never will. Just follow the law and count the ballots. You know, Mr. Producer, I actually think we could train monkeys to do better than this. I really do. Or even some high-level dogs can do this. But apparently this commissioner... It was a tough thing to do. Just tough. She meant Roe v. Wade. Of course she did. Go ahead. The opportunity I have had to set the re- record straight. Thank you for listening to me What today. do you mean set the record straight? The record is you were breaking the law. You did so openly. You did so notoriously. You did so with glee. You stuck your finger in the eye of the state Supreme Court. You stuck your finger in the eye of the election process, the people of Pennsylvania and Bucks County. You were trying to deliver a Senate seat for Chuck Schumer and Bob Casey. Somebody wake up that, that stiff and, uh, and tried to undermine David McCormick. It's all clear. That's the record. Has nothing to do with Roe v. Wade. I mean, somebody seeking an abortion in your, uh, 
In your office or something? I don't understand Roe v. Wade. Go ahead. The only chance I have to stop the snowballing, and I don't really think I could apologize anymore, but I am truthfully sorry. Then resign. What you did is unacceptable. Put out your statement and resign. Scott Pressler at a Bucks at this Bucks County Commissioner meeting. And he wants to talk, and he does directly to Diane Ellis Marsaglia. Go ahead. And I have a message. Peacefully, peacefully, we are coming for your seat in 2027. If you don't <laughs> resign today, I am coming for your seat peacefully. And Harvey, Commissioner Harvey, this goes for you too. You are complicit. Mark Elias and his cronies must be disbarred from Amen. practicing law in Pennsylvania, any of his cronies for the misconduct that they did. I want I you agree. to know that I am going to spend all of my time in Bucks County for the next three years making sure that we take back this county. Mm-hmm. They've awakened a sleeping giant, and I mean that. And Mark Elias, everybody knows who you are. You're the biggest a-hole ever to have a law license. Even worse than Avenatti, as far as I'm concerned. Everybody knows who you are. Millions and millions of people know who you are. That you are a no-good, rotten-to-the-core SOB. That's right. I said it. And that you exist to try and change the outcome of elections for the Democrats. That's right. You're a, uh, I won't say it on the air. I won't say it on the air. You're a male genitalia. May I say that, Mr. Producer? He's a male genitalia. Here's a resident of Bucks County at the commissioner meeting today. Cut nine, go. Diane's actually right, though. The law doesn't matter anymore in this country because people like you violate it all the time, and all we the people do is sit here and complain. Well, I want to let you know that I'm not going to take it anymore. I have decided to file a criminal complaint against both of you for breaking the following laws. Title 25, Section 3050. Title 25, Section 3501. Title 25, Section 3510. Title 25, Section 3527. 52 U.S.C. 10308. Oh, and by the way, Gene, when they're arrested, we want an evening town hall style commissioner's meeting. You think they'll have like grape juice and sugar cookies? I think I could go to that, Mr. Producer. Now, I have a question, America. Where's Merrick Garland, a.k.a. Meritless Garland? Where's the Department of Injustice? Where's the criminal division? Where's the U.S. attorney that covers the Eastern District of Pennsylvania? You have people here that try to overturn a federal election. You have people here who openly stated that they were going to defy the law. You have people here that ordered the counting of illegal ballots to affect again a federal election. Where's the United States Department of Injustice? Where's the United States Attorney's Office? Where's the Attorney General of the United States? Where are they? Where's this Civil Rights Division? Moving into this, into this county, talking about how they were violating the civil rights of citizens. Where is the full force of the police state and the iron fist of the Biden-Harris Department of Justice. It's nowhere. <gasps> nowhere. Where's Project 65, the group that was put together by leftists to try and disbar or at least smear lawyers who were involved in, in 20, uh, 2020 campaign activities? Are they going to turn their sights on Mark Elias? The stupid looking little bastard? Sort of the Brian Stelter lookalike? Except Stelter is Cary Grant compared to him. Hmm? Anybody going to challenge him? I'm not encouraging it. I'm not soliciting. I'm just wondering out loud. It's called free speech. I'm wondering. How about Elias? Does he escape? And so here we have, in Bucks County, which is a beautiful county. I grew up in Montgomery County, right next door. Montgomery County's been destroyed, too. Completely destroyed. Democrats took it over, ruined it. So there you go. 
But there's Bucks County. Bucks County was sort of a liberal Republican county. Now it's a marginal county. It can go either way. It can go either way. It's bipolitical. Can we call it bipolitical, Mr. Producer? It's bipolitical. Some of you people out there on the left, you'll better understand what I'm talking about. So how is it that federal investigators, whether they be civil rights or criminal division, how is it that federal prosecutors, whether it be the U.S. attorney or main justice, the public integrity section or the criminal division, yeah, I know justice like the back of my hand. I was there for many years. Why aren't they pouring into Bucks County, gathering records, issuing subpoenas, doing interviews to ensure the integrity of the election? There was a resurre- resurrection. Yeah, resurrection. There was an effort in Bucks County to overturn a federal election. There was an insurrection, if you will. Notice I didn't say erection, Mr. Producer, like the Democrats do. That's always on their mind, you understand. Yes. Why is that, America? Because they stink. That's why Democrats are treated one way, Republicans are treated another way. Question asked, question answered. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Folks, have you ever thought about what charities and causes you give your hard-earned money to? Pure Talk, my cell phone company, supports veterans. As a veteran-led company, that's their passion project. And that's why Pure Talk has slashed $10 million in veteran debt. That's why they donate tens of thousands of dollars every month to help prevent veteran suicide. That's why they donate $50,000 to Micro Works, providing scholarships to veterans learning the trades after active duty. Now, isn't that a company you can get behind? Time to jump ship from these other three guys. There's a better option. Pure Talk gives you the same great coverage, America's most dependable 5G network, for half the cost. And you'll be supporting a company that is helping our vets it's a win-win dial pound 250 say keyword mark levin you'll be connected to pure talks u.s call center that's right they invest in american jobs to better serve you and remember they're half the price of the big three go to puretalk.com slash levin today that's puretalk.com slash l-e-v-i-n switch to a company that invests in american jobs to better serve you again go to puretalk.com slash levin you'll get an additional 50 percent off your first month pure talk america's wireless company We were talking about the Comcast and MSLSD over at the Rap.pro. How Comcast cable spinoff could fuel media con- consolidation. Very interesting. It's already pretty consolidated. So they're going to spin it off apparently for the purpose of selling it. They're going to have to have a garage sale or a fire sale, I think. Business Insider Comcast doesn't want It's cable channels anymore. We knew this would be the case. We talked about this, you and I, uh, that they need to get rid of them if they're not going to fix them. Variety. MSNBC faces potential for big changes in Comcast cable spinoff. MSNBC fans, all all three of them, were disappointed in the progressive-leaning network after Donald Trump's victory in 2024 may no longer have it to kick around. The cable news outlet could have to consider changing its name and familiar markings under a spinoff of the bulk of the cable assets of parent company Comcast, one of the nascent companies new top executives suggested to an assemblage of MSNBC staffers yesterday morning, excuse me, this morning, according to two people familiar with the gathering. The president of the group, Lazarus, told an audience that included Rachel Madcow, Chris Jansen, and Katie Turd, that he was not sure whether MSNBC would have to change its identity as part of the transaction, which will split the cable network and its business news sibling, CNBC, from NBC News and NBC Universal. If they don't change the name, they're going to get two cents on the dollar. If the two networks are no longer part of the NBC corporate entity, attendees wanted to know, will they still be able to carry marks that are part of their former home? I don't know if Elon has any cash around lately, given his purchase of X and so forth. He may want to pick this off, pennies on the dollar. MSNBC's news-gathering process may also be ripe for transformation of the coming transaction. 
with people familiar with the meeting indicating the executive did not have immediate answers about whether a unit for collecting and verifying news separate from the NBC network would have to be built from scratch. You see, they let the inmates control the asylum here. These hosts and the guests that they brought in destroyed the network. True story. Many years ago, over 20 years ago, before MSNBC was a left-wing place, it was actually a news site, before Fox really got its, uh, its feet in place, I was invited to be a, a contributor to both networks, Mr. Producer. Do you remember this? <laughs> and so I went to MSNBC because they offered me more. Again, MSNBC wasn't what it is today. It was more newsy. And uh, I did it for about a year. They wanted to renew me. Everybody wants to renew me. It's crazy. But they wanted to renew me, <clears throat> unless they have an ideological or personal problem with me. And that's them, not me. I get along with everybody. I really do. Now, that said, I didn't resign. One year was enough. It was fun. I remember John Gibson had the show. They had boxes, I seem to recall. They had four guests, maybe five. It was always one against three or four, me being the one. And I thought it was great. That just gave me more time to, you know, to throw little turds in the swimming pool at each one of them, and they, they would flip out. But we had a good time. They need to change the name now. If it's not going to be part of Comcast, NBC, then it needs to be something else. But more than a name change, which is relatively superficial, they need to clean house. None of those people are getting ratings. None of those people are believed anymore. None of those people are trustworthy. They threw in their lot with the most radical elements in the Democrat Party. They weren't even moderates, but the language they used, the poison they used, the attack on the American people, bringing in guests like Donnie Douche, who is constantly attacking Trump supporters, turns out, include people from all walks of life. You know, this is, this is crazy and outrageous. So they have bad judgment, bad judgment, and they're radicals. Either radicals for decades, or they became radicals in order to try and draw attention to themselves on that network. They say the prospect of being separated from NBC News has raised alarms among journalists at the company. Uh, who are the journalists at the company? Because MSNBC and CNBC, CNBC's good, don't get me wrong, routinely share reportage, contributors and more, and because much of MSNBC's daytime schedule is filled with correspondents affiliated, let's not pretend, Variety, that this is a news operation at MSNBC. Yes, there's news from time to time, but it is the exception, not the rule. MSNBC is much different than CNBC. MSNBC is loaded with the worst kind of reprobates. I mean, to even drag Al Sharpton onto that network, what the hell is that all about? And then they pick up these Republicans like Nicole Wallace? Is that a joke? Like other cable networks, MSNBC is facing significant business challenges. Fox isn't facing. Not that I'm aware of. It's been litigation, but when it comes to its, its core activities and its work, and what it presents to the American people, it's doing just fine. In fact, it's doing great. In fact, my ratings are great. By the way, how come these trades don't even report about my ratings anymore? It's crazy. What's going on there? It's so weird. Anyway, my problem, not yours. We'll be right back. Folks, have you ever thought about what charities and causes you give your hard-earned money to? Pure Talk, my cell phone company, supports veterans. As a veteran-led company, that's their passion project. And that's why Pure Talk has slashed $10 million in veteran debt. That's why they donate tens of thousands of dollars every month to help prevent veteran suicide. That's why they donate $50,000 to Mike Rowe Works, providing scholarships to veterans learning the trades after active duty. Now, isn't that a company you can get behind? Time to jump ship from these other three guys. There's a better option. Pure Talk gives you the same great coverage, America's most dependable 5G network, for half the cost. And you'll be supporting a company that is helping our vets. It's a win-win. 
Dial pound 250. Say keyword Mark Levin. You'll be connected to Pure Talk's U.S. call center. That's right. They invest in American jobs to better serve you. And remember, they're half the price of the big three. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin today. That's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N. Switch to a company that invests in American jobs to better serve you. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin. You'll get an additional 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, America's wireless company. The Constitution Man, Mark Levin. Call him now at 877-381-3811. Xavier Becerra, kind of an invisible man, is out of California. Another, uh, another export from California, the Radical Democrats. He's the Secretary of HHS. He's at a hearing today on refugee resettlement. And you see, the Democrats are so worried about what the Republicans and Trump are going to do. What about the children? What about the children? So Chip Roy, our our friend, he says to Becerra, yeah, what about the children? What the hell are you doing about the children who are missing? Cut 10, go. Are you familiar with Walter Javier Martinez? Martinez was a 17-year-old from El Salvador who appeared at the border as a UAC in March of 2022. Months later, in July 22, he raped and murdered Kayla Hamilton, a 20-year-old woman in Maryland. After Martinez's uh, release from the border and before Mrs. Hamilton's tragic death, HHS released him to a sponsor in May of 2022. Um, despite Martinez having gang tattoos and an arrest record for illicit association with MS-13. Mr. Secretary, how can you credibly claim that HHS is working to protect these children? And by the way, children we're talking about in the order of magnitude of 400 and something thousand children, which you are dismissing that they are lost. Let me ask you a very specific question, Mr. Secretary. Can you account for the whereabouts of those 400 and something thousand children? The 320,000 that were put in the report by the inspector general, the 85,000 that we've talked about before in 2023. Do you know where all of these children are and that they are safe? Yes or no? Congressman, as I explained the process, we we get these kids when they are referred to us by the Department of Homeland Security. We then provide them with care while they are in our custody. We lose custody of those kids once we find a vetted sponsor with whom they can stay. A once vetted sponsor that rapes and murders the people that, that they're entrusted to? Because you, you, you issue a rule that doesn't even do the background check? That's what you think is appropriate care for these children? Yeah. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. This is very important. They're not vetting these people when they come in. They're not vetting people in many instances, in way too many instances, when they turn these children over to them. They're trying to shuffle them in and shuffle them out of their control so they can pretend that their numbers are way down. And so when we have an open border like this, not only do Americans pay the price in so many respects, crime, jobs, resources, but these people pay a price. The children, the unaccompanied children pay a price. The women pay a price. Open border is a disaster for everybody, unless you're a criminal, unless you're a drug cartel, unless you're a gun runner and a drug runner. For everybody else, it's a disaster. But for the Democrat Party, this is a policy. They're looking for votes. They're trying to change, quote unquote, reshape, as the New York Times put it, the electorate. That's it. That's the bottom line. There's no other rationale for this. And so all this is happening in order to to support, to promote, to empower the Democrat Party. Maybe not today, but five years from now, ten years from now. And so now we have a Venezuela gang, an international gang in our country, doing business in 16 states, in every major city in Tennessee, probably every major city in the country, quite frankly. We've never seen anything like it, and they weren't here five years ago. We had a fentanyl problem, but we didn't have a fentanyl problem like we have today. 100,000, 100,000, 110,000 people dying a year. It's as if nothing's going on. Okay, so what? What do you mean, so what? Andy Biggs to Xavier Becerra at the hearing today. Cut 11, go. So let's let's read this one here. This is from Directive uh, 10 Days Later, uh, March 31st, 2021. 
effective immediately background check requirements for adult household members and alternate adult caregivers identified in a sponsor care plan are not required as a condition of release under any category two. So, so it's not required all the time, right? It just is, uh, it's voluntary for DNA uh, for parents. So how can you say that your number one priority is the safety of these unaccompanied children when you're placing them in sponsors' homes that in an occasion have had criminal gang affiliations because there's been no proper background check? How, how can you say that? Congressman, if you follow child welfare best practices, you do uh, an extensive background check. We follow child welfare uh, best practices, so we do those extensive background checks, which could include any number of things. Uh, if so so how, did, how did it happen? I've got this report I'd like to submit to the record. This is Senator Grassley's report. Without objection. Uh, how, how did we f see children end up in the, the homes of MS-13 gang members as the sponsor? How'd that happen? Congressman, you'd have, I don't have any information before me that you're referencing, but what I can tell you is that no sponsor would be allowed to take a child if we have information that shows that they are engaged in criminal activity. But if you don't do the vetting right, you don't know if they're engaged in criminal activity. That's, uh, that's, how, that's how you end up with an MS-13 gang member as the sponsor. That's how you end up with pedophiles getting 20 children in the same home. That's how you end up there, because the vetting's been crappy. He's right on. It's a disaster. A complete disaster. And these are the people who now want you to believe that deporting illegal aliens is inhumane. The people who stood by and watched as hundreds of thousands of young children went missing. And they're members of Congress, the Democrats. As God knows how many women were sold into sex slavery. They can't even give you a number. It wasn't this way when Trump was president the first time around. In fact, it wasn't this way when Obama was president. This is a, an intentional destruction of the culture, an intentional destruction of our constitutional and legal norms, an intentional effort to bring in as many people as possible to eventually give them citizenship, so they can have their children in the United States, they become citizens, and then you have chain migration. If you have 20 or more million illegal aliens, we had 11 million, they kept talking about that for 20 years, that was the number for 20 years, which was ridiculous. So if you have 11 million and you have 10 more million, and that's about the number, you have 21 million, if not more, and they bring in five family members, 10 family members, you're talking about 10 family members, you're talking about over 200 million people. Mr. Producer, in a nation of a little over 300 million people, you're talking about a massive revolution by immigration that I keep talking about. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know who this is, Jasmine Crockett. Oh, yeah, I do. I think I do. Isn't she the big mouth from one of the islands, Mr. Producer? I forget. Oh, she's from Texas. Well, I was close. But she is a big mouth. And there's a hearing today about oppression, among other things. And Jasmine wants to make something abundantly clear on Cut 12. Go ahead. There has been no oppression for the white man in this country. You tell me which white men were dragged out of their homes. You tell me which one of them got dragged all the way across an ocean and told that you were going to go and work. We are going to steal your wives. We are going to rape your wives. That didn't happen. That is okay. Can we slow down here, uh, Jasmine? The vast majority of the people in the United States, their ancestry doesn't even go that far back in the United States. That's the truth. That's the truth. I don't know anybody who's defending slavery who has uh, two brain cells to rub together. I can tell you white men who were pulled into slavery. Maybe not here. But I can tell you white men who were poured into slavery. You ever see the pyramids? White, black, or in between. The Jews built those. They were 
slaves of the Egyptians. You may read about that in the Bible. If you read the Bible. In fact, when Thomas Jefferson was president, he had to send the Navy to what is the area around Somalia because African pirates and others would capture those commercial ships and enslave the sailors in those ships, thousands of them, as it turned out. So he had to send the nascent Navy over there to put an end to it. John Adams was trying to negotiate with them. See, it helps to know a little history. John Adams was trying to negotiate with them, tried to appease them. He got nowhere. Jefferson said, no, no more negotiations. So in effect, there was a mini war that took place. A mini war that took place. I take a look at Arlington National Cemetery. Take a look at Arlington National Cemetery. What do you see there? One grave after another, after another, after another, after another. Thousands and thousands and thousands of men and women who fought for this country in every war. And that's just one military cemetery. There are others across the country, across the globe. The vast majority of people who've died and are buried there are Christians. The vast majority of people buried there are men. Christian men. The vast majority of the people buried there are white Christian men. There's no denying history, period. Hundreds of thousands fought in the Civil War. There were over 700,000 casualties on both sides. Hundreds of thousands of men died fighting for the North to end slavery and keep the Union. Small percentage is buried right there at Arlington National Cemetery, but they're buried all over the country. Can we at least accept the fact that the vast majority of Americans opposed slavery, even at the height of slavery? That the vast majority of Americans didn't even know a slave, let alone owned a slave? That the vast majority of Southerners never owned slaves? The vast majority did not own slaves. But that there was slavery, and there were slave owners, and they are, were horrific? That these, this stench did exist in the United States? But to attack everybody in the United States, to attack the entire country, is a grotesque smear. A grotesque smear. I don't know what she's yelling about. I don't know why she brought this up about show me the oppressed white man. I don't know what triggered that. I have no idea. But I want to set the record uh, uh, straight. Slavery, yes. Horrific, yes. A blight on America, yes. No question about it. Slavery exists today in Africa. Where black Muslims capture black Christians and enslave them in the Congo and other places, in the Sudan, right now as I speak, as I speak, in the Middle East, Arab enslaving Arab, taking place right now as I speak, in communist China, the Uyghurs are enslaved, two and a half million, in concentration camps. There's slavery going on in the world today. Not 150 years ago, today. And nobody says a damn thing about it but me. I'm just being... Absolutely honest about it. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Folks, have you ever thought about what charities and causes you give your hard-earned money to? Pure Talk, my cell phone company, supports veterans. 
As a veteran-led company, that's their passion project. And that's why Pure Talk has slashed $10 million in veteran debt. That's why they donate tens of thousands of dollars every month to help prevent veteran suicide. That's why they donate $50,000 to Mike Rowe Works, providing scholarships to veterans learning the trades after active duty. Now, isn't that a company you can get behind? Time to jump ship from these other three guys. There's a better option. Pure Talk gives you the same great coverage, America's most dependable 5G network, for half the cost. And you'll be supporting a company that is helping our vets. It's a win-win. Dial pound 250. Say keyword Mark Levin. You'll be connected to Pure Talk's U.S. call center. That's right. They invest in American jobs to better serve you. And remember, they're half the price of the big three. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin today. That's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N. Switch to a company that invests in American jobs to better serve you. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin. You'll get an additional 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, America's wireless company. I want to tell you about something that, uh, that occurred in the Senate today. While Israel is fighting for its survival, a long list of Democrats voted, a long list of Democrats voted to cancel the $20 billion in pending arms sales to Israel. Israel buys them. To cancel $20 billion in pending arms sales to Israel that, we all, that Congress already authorized while the Democrats and their party gave $200 billion to Iran and continues to fund UNRWA and the Palestinian Authority. I'm going to address this when we return. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. It's the Power Hour. Hour three. We keep our foot on the gas pedal. Our number is 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. The Republican Jewish Coalition reports a vote that took place in the Senate today. Remember, the Democrats still run the Senate under Schumer. And I want you to keep a few things in mind. This vote was taken more than two weeks after the election. They point out today marks a dangerous new low for the anti-Israel Democrats in the U.S. Senate. They're actually mostly anti-Semites who voted to cancel $20 billion in pending arms sales to Israel that were already authorized by Congress. Notice they don't vote to cancel sales to Ukraine. Notice they don't vote to cut off monies to Iran or to UNRWA, which subsidizes through the U.N., Hamas. Notice they don't vote to cut off sales to the Palestinian terrorists and the Palestinian Authority. Notice they don't vote to do any of that. It's the Jews. The Democrat Party has made it clear it's the anti-Jewish party. As Israel's ambassador to the United States, States, Michael Herzog, correctly pointed out, anyone urging you to ban critical arms to Israel during an existential war is not pro-Israel. It's also shameful that self-proclaimed Schumer, Shomer Schumer, refused to whip votes against the anti-Israel measure, meaning he didn't fight it. He didn't lean on his members to vote against it. And this is who he is. This is who he is. Behind the scenes, he unjews himself. In front of the cameras, he wants you to believe that he's some kind of supporter. He's not. History will judge the following 18 Democrat U.S. Senators and their apologists harshly. Senator Dick Durbin one of the leaders of the Democrat Party. He's endorsed by a group called J Street that's funded in large measure by Soros. J Street is a radical left-wing organization led by Jews who hate the state of Israel. Don't ask me to explain. I'm just telling you who they are. So J Street is where the anti-Semites go and the Israel haters and the Jew haters go to get cover. Who else? Marxist Islamist Bernie Sanders also endorsed by J Street. Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia, now that that election's over, the Jews in Virginia who voted for him, congratulations, you screwed yourselves. 
J Street endorsed. And also this group called the U.S. Jewish Dems. <clears throat> Excuse me. Who else? Senator Chris Van Hollen. I understand his wife is, a, is an Israel-hating whack job. Also endorsed by J Street and this other group. Senator Jeff Merkley of Oregon. Endorsed by J Street. Senator Peter Welch. Endorsed by J Street. Senator John Ossoff. More like S. Well, never mind. Endorsed by J Street. Now, Ossoff is Jewish. This is what I mean. Sanders is Jewish. They're Jewish by birth and ethnicity, not Jewish by belief and soul and heart. You have Ossoff. You have Senator Raphael Warnock, radical Marxist. Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut, endorsed by J Street. Senator Gene Shaheen of New Hampshire, endorsed by J Street. They all try to pretend that they're moderates. Senator Martin Heinrich, Heinrich of New Mexico, endorsed by J Street. Senator Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas, real piece of crap. Senator Maisie Hirono of Hawaii, endorsed by J Street. Senator Brian Schatz, Jewish, of Hawaii, endorsed by J Street. See, they're Marxists first. Marxists first. And, of course, Marx hated religion. He was born a Jew. He hated Judaism. Senator Edward Markey of Massachusetts, endorsed by J Street. Senator Angus King, named after a cow. Angus King pretends to be a moderate independent from the state of Maine, endorsed by J Street. Senator Ben Ray Lujan of New Mexico, endorsed by J Street. These 18 anti-Semitic Democrats, that's right. Jews can be anti-Semitic. That's right. Ask Blinken. They voted to cut the $20 billion that was already approved in arms sales to the state of Israel. In the middle of a war. Led by little Dick Durbin. The Senate Republicans voted unanimously in opposition to this betrayal of Israel, they write, and the empowering of the terrorist regime in Tehran. Unanimously. I guess uh, I guess Rand Paul was absent. He may have been in the men's room. You never know. Because he's a real Israel hater. After the horrors of October 7, America must continue to support the destruction of Hamas. But apparently a lot of Senate Democrats support Hamas because, in effect, that's what they're voting for. These 18 Democrats, I've posted it, and I don't want you to forget. And notice the vote again occurred two weeks after the election. And notice that Chuck Schumer did not make any effort, none, none, to whip the votes against the anti-Israel measure. That is, to get as many Democrats as he could to vote against it. He was not even involved. He just let it happen. Schumer is the worst kind of... Well, right now, I'll keep it to myself. He's the worst kind of a Jewish person. He really is. He just really is. He's a, he's a real lowlife. It's politics first. It's Marxism first. It's party first. Never country first with Schumer, ever, ever. That's why he's pushing through these judges for lifetime appointments, almost 30 of them, because they lost the election, but they don't want to lose control of the government, the culture, and the society. That's who Schumer is. He's a lowlife. Ed Luce is the U.S. national editor at the Financial Times. Now, he's supposed to be a reporter, right, Mr. Producer? For a financial enterprise, a financial media outlet. So he's on the morning Schmo show, who now has less ratings than he did before, because he actually came to his senses, and he's not allowed to do that. Listen to this. Cut three. Go. So I think there is a larger pattern here. It's not just that you're getting charlatans. Is this guy, um, what, what is he? Is he British? What the hell is he? Yes, uh, so we're getting charlatans, you see. You're getting charlatans from Trump. Now, this guy's the national editor of the Financial Times. You're getting charlatans, you see. This is why MSNBC is dead. It's dead. It's a walking dead broadcast platform. It's dead. Because you talk about charlatans, Ed Luce is a charlatan. 
In fact, they have a conga line of charlatans and reprobates that they just keep bringing in there. Like homeless people off the street. Let's start at the top. Go. So I think there is a larger pattern here. It's not just that you're getting charlatans um, being picked for these really important roles. Um, it's that you have a dismantling of the federal government. You have a disabling of the federal government, which is a very explicit the disabling part. of the federal government. They're not even in the federal government yet, you clown, you jackass. And a disabling of the federal government. So if you dare to cut programs and money so we don't go broke, so your children actually have a future? You're disabling the federal government? This guy's the editor, U.S. national editor at the Financial Times? He's a fraud, he's a freak, he's a phony. Speaking of whom, who else is in this conga line of losers that are brought on the Morning Schmo Show? Stephanie Rule. What a jackass she is. May I say that? I think I shall. Equity, you know. Men and women. Cut four, go. Joe, it's all just about, you know, covering the hell out of this administration, right? Donald Trump obviously won the election. Oh, she's a quickie. She's a quickie. She's a sharp one. Go ahead. I mean, he's going to get a free pass to do exactly what he wants. And the media... Did somebody say he's going to get a free pass on exactly what he wants? Stephanie. May I call you Steph? Steph. We'll call her Steph. What are you talking about, Steph? First of all, why aren't you just being a reporter? Why are you worried about Donald Trump's not going to get a free pass? Why are you making speeches? Why don't you just do your friggin' job for once in your pathetic career? Seriously. She was a uh, Kamala Harris ass kisser from the, from the start. She's a Democrat Party ass kisser. She hates Donald Trump, always has. Donald Trump's not going to get a pass from the media. Oh, you don't say. Really? We know who you are in the media. We know what's happening in the media. We know your, your corporate bosses have had about enough, but we'll see how serious they are. But we know it's clowns like you that drag down the media, you jerk. It's clowns like you that chase viewers away. You think we want to hear from a yenta like you? You might as well be on The View. You might as well be on The View and join the other jerks. You know, Karen... And uh, Sonny, who's not Sonny at all, our ancestors owned slaves. By the way, my ancestors never owned slaves. They were slaves. Go ahead. We're going to cover them every day. But as far as what we're covering, you know, even human nature. Oh, right? shut up, you idiot. Just shut up. Like you said, oh, we're going to cover them every day. Nobody's watching you, don't you know? Nobody knows who you are. Nobody cares what you have to say. You're finito. You're done. You're done. You're a well-done steak. It's over. Wait a minute. I like well-done steaks. You're not a well-done steak. You're something else. And first of all, the words well-done should never be used in a description of you anyway. Steph, may I say. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know, ladies and gentlemen, Vladimir Putin keeps drawing red lines. And, of course, the Putinoids with their hemorrhoids in the media keep jumping when he says jump. Some of them are my friends. Oh, my God, we're going to have nuclear war. My God. Hello. Hello. Stratcom Center. Putin is now issuing his famed red lines at such a furious pace that by the time he issued his latest, Ukraine had already wildly violated it. Likely drafted in last night's late hours before being released to the press this morning, Putin's quote-unquote updated nuclear doctrine wasn't in time to impede Ukraine's early morning deep strikes on a Russian ammunition depot deep in Russia's Bryansk region with American ATACMs. Missiles. Increasingly, we find that Putin's so-called red lines exist only in the minds of Western politicians, as I might add, people on TV and radio. For reference, here's some of Russia's other recent red lines. If Sweden joins NATO, nuclear alert. If Ukraine receives Western I-55 millimeter shells, red line, nuclear alert. If Ukraine receives 
H-I-M-A-R's, nuclear alert. If Ukraine gets ATACMs, which they just used, nuclear alert. If Ukraine receives Western tanks, nuclear alert. If Ukraine attacks Crimea, nuclear alert. If Ukraine uses Western cluster munitions, nuclear alert. If Ukraine uses Western targeting and satellite information, red line, nuclear alert. If Ukraine strikes Russian oil refineries in Russia, red line, nuclear alert. If Ukraine shoots down a Russian military plane over Russia, they've done all these things, nuclear alert. If Ukraine gets F-16s, nuclear alert. If long-range Western weapons strike Russian territory, which they just did, nuclear alert. What's next? Folks, please think for yourselves. I know there's propagandists, isolationists, and others on the left and the right. When I wrote my book, Liberty and Tyranny, an entire chapter on national security, I said the watchword is prudence. Prudence, not ideology, not fear-mongering. Putin puts this stuff out for our media. Our media, I mean even conservative media, who regurgitate this stuff. Who regurgitate this stuff. He's got 10,000 North Korean troops. He's got unknown amounts of killer drones from Iran that stole the technology, as I said the other day, from us during the Clinton administration, which used a drone and it crashed in Iran. He's got weapons from communist China. And uh, Ukraine's now allowed to actually shoot their missiles to hit inside Russia, which they haven't been allowed to do. And they're not aiming at infrastructure. They're not aiming at population centers. They're aiming at weapons depots. Wouldn't it be nice if Putin did the same thing, if his hands were tied behind his back? So Putin, his red line, he's mentioned it at least 12 times. I'll be right back. This is the nation's town hall meeting, and you can join in at 877-381-3811. Try something different here. That I've never done before in all my years on radio. Mr. Brewer, do you have our buddy David Limbaugh's number? Will you check and see if you do? It's been a while. If you do, let's call him and bring him on the air. I haven't talked to him in months. He's my buddy. He's like a brother. And uh, I'll just surprise him. You don't have his number. During the break, I'll give it to you. Jennifer Rubin is a nobody. I'm sure you've never heard of her. Uh, she has been on a Trump hate obsession, really unhinged, for at least a decade. She was a Hollywood lawyer and Democrat. She became kind of a repubic. And then she uh, lost it, in my humble opinion. She works, I believe, still at the Washington Compost. Hopefully they'll broom that place and clean it up. But I want to show you what kind of an, in my humble opinion... Nut job we're dealing with here. Just my opinion. Here she is. She has her own podcast, Mr. Producer calls me. What's the podcast called? Do we know? Is it called something like, I hate Trump? Trump on the mind? The Trumpsters? I don't know. Or is it unhinged, obsessed, and a reprobate? Just some names I would suggest. My opinion. But here she is. Cut 18. Go. Republicans want to kill your kids. It's actually true. If you're going to oppose vaccination. Let's just slow there. Republicans want to kill your kids. It's actually true. Now, anything after that is really, uh, it's, 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 it's applesauce for the mind. In other words, it's ridiculous. So Republicans want to kill your kids. It's actually true. How sick is she? I mean, is the Washington Post really happy about a reprobate like this? Have I ever even said Democrats want to kill your kids? It's actually... Who talks like this? Who talks like this? She does. Jennifer Rubin. Jen. Hello, Jen. Let's take it from the top, shall we? Go ahead. Republicans want to kill your kids. It's actually true. 
if you're going to oppose vaccinations, if you're going to stop breakthrough medical research. Who's stopping breakthrough medical research? Is that a Trump position? I'm, I'm, I guess I'm unaware of this. Stop breakthrough medical research? Go ahead. Minors and all sorts of people to get semi-automatic weapons, which they use to shoot up schools. Who is who is talking about minors getting semi-automatic weapons, which they use to shoot up schools? What kind of head case is this? Go ahead. And you are responsible for kids' health and death, unfortunately. It has to be that simple and that direct, and it has to be over and over and over again. I don't even know what to say about this nut job. I really don't even know what to say. Other than Jennifer Rubin. If you see her byline anywhere, now you know who she is and what she is. You know, in an era of media nut jobs, propagandists, demagogues, she like takes the cake here. She's up there with Joy Reid and uh, and Sonny What's her ass over there at the View. What's her name again? Halston. What's her real name? Do you remember? Asuncion. Really sick, don't you think, America? That's Jennifer Rubin of the Washington Compost. I wonder if Bezos is aware of this. You know, at some point, these owners need to take control of their businesses. Some of them seem to be doing that. Let's just hope it's not for show. Some of them seem to be doing that, but... I mean, this is a columnist? We're supposed to read her? Why? Joe Scarborough on the Morning Joe today. I don't know. There's something about Joe. I don't know what it is. I told you I bumped him to him on a plane. He couldn't have been nicer. I don't know if it's two personalities. I don't know if he's struggling with his inner self. I don't know what it is. But we welcome Joe back, wouldn't we, Mr. Producer? <laughs> you were very hesitant there. <laughs> Joe, we'll welcome you back. If it's good enough for Donald Trump, it's good enough. Actually, he's very magnanimous, Donald Trump. He's very nice. But we'll see how Joe does over the course of the next few weeks, months, maybe years, depending on what happens over there at MSLSD. We'll see. Cut 15, go. I will say really quickly on this, you know, Drudge at the top said, oh, like news meltdown, all this other stuff. All right, there's I mean, number can... one, Joe. Stop reading Drudge. He's a moron. He's not what he used to be. He must have had a head trauma or something. I don't know what the hell's going on with him. I don't care. He and I used to be buddies. Did you know that, Mr. Producer? We used to email and text all the time. I cut him off. I want nothing to, I don't even know how to, and I don't care. I'm sure I'm blocked. It's not like I'm trying. I noticed, who was it, Hannity, told me that my name is no longer on the list of links that he has on his site. Oh, wow. Maybe it's because I keep posting Drudge Hates America. Maybe that's why. But man, oh, man, a Shevitz. Did this guy do a, a 180? Did a whole pirouette. I'd like to see that, but he did it. And he'll go down with the rest of them, MSNBC, CNN, because he's not going to, uh, he's not going to straighten course. No, no, no. He's got a new following of about 17 people who hate America. And now they rely on drudge. Patriots don't go there anymore. I don't blame them. Anyway, back to Joe. Cut 15. Go. We could all be fired a year from now. Whenever this happens, you never know what's going to happen. Or tomorrow. <laughs> or, yeah, but but in this case, though, Willie, what they're doing is what other media firms are doing. You spin off the cable channels, which seven years ago were making a ton of money. Now they've got to figure out how to make them profitable. Disney, yeah. which, I, by the way, huge media news, Disney has figured out now how to make streaming profitable. Peacock had an extraordinary success in the Olympics. So they're talking about spinning this off. Comcast still owns, I think Brian Roberts still owns a third of that. 
And because Comcast didn't jump into the bidding war like everybody else, uh, throwing stupid money at streaming services and then watch it flop, Comcast has a ton of cash. So now they spin this off and they're in a position to, uh, to what do you all say? We, we, you, to, 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 uh, we, to get a lot of chat, to get a lot of different. All right, I let mean, me help them out there at MSNBC. It has nothing to do with all that. They can't stand you guys. You did this. Every host there, the conga line of guests, you did this to yourselves. Comcast wasn't going to spin off anything, I'm sure. But now they're embarrassed. Now they're losing audience. Now they're losing money. Now people are drawing attention to the owners of Comcast, that is the board of directors, the CEO. I've been drawing attention to Comcast at the top advising people that there is something you can do. You can go to their annual board meetings. You can make a stink about what's taking place. People do this in other companies too. And so it was touching a little too close to home. A little too close to the hot oven there. And Comcast is worried about its core business. Now Comcast may be sitting on a lot of money, but an awful lot of people are canceling their subscriptions to cable. That's why you see companies that are very smart. You see the Blaze, which I'm involved in. You see the Daily Wire. You see other entities out there who are doing digital TV and digital broadcast platforms, many others. But I just named two of the best. And uh, you also see Fox really promoting heavily Fox Nation because it sees digital as being very, very important in the future. And so... They're well-positioned. Blaze is well-positioned. Daily Wire is well-positioned. I'm well-positioned, may I say, Mr. Producer, bum leg and all. I'm in my right position. And so people have seen this. So what's going on really with Comcast, maybe they're late to this, but I think the main reason is they've just had enough. <clears throat> Excuse me. And rather than fire Joy Reid and take all the crap you would take firing her, even though she is a bigot and an anti-Semite, Firing Al Sharpton, who will just go right back to the race card. Quite frankly, firing people like Nicole Wallace, who's a reprobate in every respect. And you go right down the list. They probably figure, let's just get rid of this crap. What the hell's the point? What the hell's the point? And they have a point there. Maybe that's exactly what they need to do. And we'll see. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Go to our buddy Jimmy Brooklyn, the great WABC. Jimmy, go. Mark, you know, uh, Gus Hall, head of the American Communist Party, decades ago said, and it's also in writing, the best way to help the cause of communism is through the liberal wing of a Democratic Party. Now, today, the liberal wing would be considered extremely right wing in the Democrat Party. Mm -hmm. The communist right, yesterday's left is today's center. Today's left will be tomorrow's center. So the whole spectrum has moved totally to the left. I don't know of any true moderate any longer in the Democrat Party. Very few. And the idea that U.S. government being weaponized against the American people, whether it's Rudy, whether it's Trump, this is all in writing. The mm -hmm. communists wrote Czechoslovakia 1948 is the model. During the Czechoslovakia 1948, the communists got control of the enforcement parts of the government, weaponized them. They didn't use that word, weaponize. And they went after the moderates until they made a peaceful transition to socialism. So for decades and decades, that has been written as the model for socialism in the West. It's happening right before our eyes. And now we find out FEMA wouldn't help people that had yeah. Trump signs in the yard. When they get control of the health care, they could deny health care to people mm -hmm. who don't vote the right wait a minute, way. Wait, wait, wait. That is a brilliant point. The more they control, the more they will seek to control us. That is a great, great point. Go ahead. Expand on it. That's the peaceful transition to socialism on a global level. The communists know if they get control of America, they eventually get control of the whole world. Israel, Taiwan, nobody would be able to mm -hmm. last if America falls. So we've always been... 
the main enemy, the KGB says we're enemy number one. The Muslim terror allies say we're the big Satan. It's happening right before our eyes. Gradually, little by little, people don't realize it. Mark, we need a massive, coordinated, knowledgeable anti-communist movement. When Trump talked about the enemies, excuse me, the enemies within, let's grasp that enemies within. Yes, let's have that showdown. Let's have that open hearings. We could document it through the enemy's own publications, coinciding with what's going on now. Honestly, Jimmy, I don't think hearings are going to cut it. You know, we had hearings 70, 80 years ago. They were mocked. They were undermined. Uh, I don't think Congress is the place to go. I really don't. I think we need to educate more people who are behind microphones, more people who are in front of cameras, more people who are not just radio hosts, podcast hosts. In other words, use the media, particularly the uh, the media that reaches tens of millions of people, and use that media to inform the public, don't you think? That's it. That's exactly the answer. I've been doing a lot of interviews lately. I'm even getting interviewed by an American guy that works in national defense in Germany. Mm. Lenin, Lenin talked about a party of a new type. That's the Communist Party. So when you read the Soviet publications, you'll see that the Communist Party of Palestine became the PLO. You're right. The Lebanese Communist Party takes credit for chasing the U.S. Marines out. And mm -hmm. we say it was Hezbollah that chased the U.S. Marines out of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. Party of a new time. Communist Party penetrated Democrat Party. The communists work through front groups, front operations, spin-off groups. The Washington Times, the New York Post is totally tied in with the Institute for Policy Studies. I think you mean the about. New York Times, not the Washington Times. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks for that. Thank yeah, the Washington. Uh, the New. All right, York Jimmy. Uh, the music's playing. You're a font of incredible information. Stay in touch with us. We love having you on. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, our truckers, the men and women in Ukraine. God bless you. The men and women in Israel, we have your back, even though the Democrats and Biden do not. And you, the American people, red-blooded America, God bless each and every one of you. And I'll see you tomorrow.